Hello, everyone. It's Amanda with the Content Marketing Institute. Thank you so much for joining us once again for our Monday Ask the CM World Community live streams. You can find us here pretty much every Monday at noon Eastern here in the U.S. Guess what, everyone? Content Marketing World, my shirt on, is literally one week away. We will be kicking off next Tuesday, September 28th. I will be there in person in Cleveland. Of course, you can also join us online. That's a great option, especially for our folks out there in the international community. If you are registered, please feel free to connect with me on the app or in the platform. If you're not registered, maybe you want to maybe you want to think about it. You can head over to contentmarketingworld.com and check it out and learn more about it. All right. Why am I talking about content marketing world? That's because over the last few weeks, if you've been joining us, we've been talking to some of our awesome CM World speakers for all of these live streams. They're, you know, sharing their expertise and knowledge and giving us a little bit of a sneak peek into the sessions that they're going to be presenting next week. So CM World is brought to you by the Content Marketing Institute. If you don't know what CMI is, we're the leading training and education organization for all things content marketing. And you can find out more at contentmarketinginstitute.com. I see some of you are checking in already. Andy, lovely Andy Robinson is always with us. Thank you so much. She will be there in person next week. So I can't wait to see you, Andy, as well. All right, today's topic, everyone. Oh, and just like Andy, please drop me a line and let me know where you're joining us from. Last week, everyone was uh, putting their flags up. So I didn't brush up on my um, geography but and my flag knowledge, but hopefully by next week we can do that. But let me know where you're joining us from. All right, for today's topic, you likely know that original custom research, you know, it can be an effective content marketing tactic. But you may be thinking, all right, you know, how hard can it be to write some survey questions, get some responses, and write up a little report, right? Well, as anyone who has created their own research knows, the process can be just a little bit more difficult and time-consuming than that. So today we're going to get some tips on the process and how to make your original research stand out. All right, so let's kick it off today with the question of the day. So are you doing your own custom research? You know, how's it going for you? Uh, how's your experience? Do you have any pain points? Is it going well? Why don't you share those with us? And of course, today's guest will answer any questions you may have about it as well. I see some more people checking in. Ali from Wales. We have someone from Lithuania joining us. As always, folks, hello. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So doubly excited about today's guest. All right. Michelle Lynn is the co-founder and head of strategy at Mantis Research. It's a consultancy focused on helping marketers actually publish and amplify that original research. But of course, before that, Michelle, a good friend of mine, was the head of editorial at the Content Marketing Institute, where she led our strategic editorial direction. She was in charge of our research studies here, so she's going to have a lot of great stuff to share. Hello, Michelle. Hello. Great to be here. Thank you so much. We have some people from all over. Iran, Elkton, Maryland is here. Nick will be joining us in CM World next week in Cleveland, Seattle, South Africa, India, Sweden. Thanks for sharing the flag and the name of the country there, Rima. <laughs> <laughs> that, that helps me out a lot. All right, let's get to it, Michelle. Some people might be thinking, all right, I know, content marketing research is a great tactic, but really, come on, how effective can it be? What are some of the benefits that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, like you say, Amanda, I think original research works really well, and I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it for clients. It's the reason why after I left CMI, I decided I'm like, what is that thing that can work the best for content marketers and how can I help them most? And that's why I went into this space, quite frankly, because I think it's such a great opportunity. So, so I mean, like, we, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so we were at, when I was with, with CMI, you know, our research was always one of our best performing assets. Um, but I don't think that you need to be some established business to do research. You know, I was working with, um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys all know Sarah Mitchell. I know she's 
very well known in the in the CMI community. And she had started a new agency called Typeset Content, and they're with Dan Hatch, and they're in the content marketing space. And they used an original research project to launch their business. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, really effective at getting them email addresses and building up that subscriber list. It was really effective at helping them increase their domain authority, getting the word out about their agency. Um, so I think it works great if you're new, and I think it works great if, if you're really established too. Like I was just reading some playbook from um, Aaron Balsa. She's on LinkedIn, a great person to follow. And their state of remote work study, she said generated more than $490,000 in revenue. Oh, wow. So it, it can do a lot of different things. So I guess what's the most important question you should ask yourself before you, you're you in, before you begin this research project? I like to think about how do you most want to impact someone's thinking? Like, what's that thing that you want your research to do? Because there's so much other research out there. I think it's really important that you know what your research is specifically going to do that nothing else already has. Great. All right. We are talking to Michelle Lynn. She works with Mantis Research about custom research projects. So if you have any questions for Michelle, be sure to drop them. Um, in the comments, in the chat. All right, you've convinced me. I want to start my own research. Where do I start when it comes to crafting the right questions, right? You can't just throw any question out there. How do I make sure I'm getting useful insight? Absolutely. So I guess I would even say to you, don't start by crafting the questions. Like you're kind of <laughs> jumping ahead. <laughs> so many marketers are like, this is going to be fun. Let's start writing questions. What I would say is back up and put together a really simple strategy. So understand what is that thing that you want your research to do? Do you want it to build email subscribers? Do you want it to you know, be a, a thing for your thought leadership program? Do you want it to be a place you can make a lot of other content? What's that thing you want it to do? Um, figure out who it is that you want your research to most impact so that you can make sure that you're really providing those insights that are super interesting to that audience. And then I really think it's important that you understand what research exists in this space, because just like all of this other content marketing, like I was talking to someone last week and they said, you know, we want to do a report on video in about in content marketing. But if you type in video stats, there's so many reports that already exist. So you need to make sure that you have your own specific angle out there before you even start writing the questions. All right. So this is also one that, um, many people struggle with and i know that even we do here at cmi and we've had research for a very long time um how do you find survey participants you need people to answer this so you can get the insights how do how, what are some tips on on finding those folks so i think the first thing you can do if you're in a consumer space there's a lot of great panels out there that can help you source these respondents people to answer your surveys i know for instance survey monkey audience has a wonderful panel that you can use but, you know, for B2B, I think that's a lot tougher. I mean, I, I have a love-hate relationship with panels. I think that in the B2B space, the panels can be a lot more pricey. They can be a lot more um, difficult just to make sure there's really quality responses. So honestly, the best thing to do is to try to partner with another organization who, who wants to learn what you want to learn. So find that really specific thing that you want to learn. And then partner with another organization who has a larger distribution list and work on the research together. So the collaboration is is very, very helpful. And get you more participants, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and for what it's worth, I mean, make it as easy for that partner as, as possible. Like say, you know, we'll do all of the heavy lifting, we'll do all this, you know, in return, you can ask a question. We'll not only give you access to the results, but we'll give you access to how your audience answered these things. So make it as as worthwhile and valuable for them as possible. All right, Andy is asking, if you are using customer or audience data surveys as part of your research, what is a good number of people to include? So, I mean, the answer is always as many as you can, which is not a great answer. But I think if you're doing, uh, if you're looking after your own audience in the B2B space, people typically will respond fine if you have 200, 200 and, or 250 or, or more. I mean, that's very anecdotal, but I think that's a great place to start. But the other thing you need to think about is if you want to look at the data set as a whole or if you want to look at the data set the data set based on segments. So do you want to compare what like large versus small companies do or what 
those who are successful versus not as successful doing. And then you need to make sure that you have enough in each segment to do those types of, of comparisons. That's great. All right, so I get people, like you said, to fill out the survey. Got all this great data. So what are some of your tips for presenting the findings in an interesting and a meaningful way? Yeah, so this kind of goes back up to your question earlier, Amanda, about what kind of questions do you want to ask? But I think it's so easy to get stuck into this rut of, of asking what I call inventory questions. So what is the state of the state? So how many people are doing this? Or what are your plans for the future? And I think all of those types of questions are really interesting, but I think the best way to get insights is to ask questions that are going to give you stories. So think with, when you look at the data, so what? what does, what's the data actually going to mean? So for instance, in that state of, of writing example I mentioned from Sarah, one of the questions we asked was, does your organization plan to increase, decrease, or you know, remain consistent with the amount of content they publish? So we found that about 61% of organizations said they wanted to increase their writing. And in and of itself, that's kind of like a state of the state stat, stat. It's not that interesting. But what we did is we asked a question, well, do you plan to increase your writing in to e increase or decrease your investment in writing? And I think it was like 40% said they were. So that's a really interesting story. So, you know, people want to write more, but they don't want to spend more. So how do you manage that? Do you, how do you get more budget? How do you do more with less? How do you be productive with what you have? So you can kind of see if you make sure that you ask questions that are going to give you those stories in the back end. Um, I think that's a really important place to, to start. Great. All right. I did everything you said. I presented the findings to audience, our customers. Uh, is that it? Is there something else we can do with our findings? We've sp spent all this time and work and money doing this cu custom research. Is there something else we can do with it? So I mean, what I always we did this research with Bustumo a couple years back, and this is gonna this is gonna be an obvious duh thing to say. But what we learn are those people who are more successful with research are doing more things with their research. So they're taking their research and creating blog posts and. You know, let's say they find out that people are challenged in this area. They're writing a blog post about how to deal with those challenges um, or they're guest posting on other organizations, websites, or they're doing webinars or video series or all of these different things you can do with your research. So I always challenge organizations to figure out at least six things they're going to do with their research to really give it the most reach and to make that investment that they make with time and money to make the most sense. I was going to say, you, you do all this work and have this beautiful report here, here, and then that's it. <laughs> exactly. And then they go on to the next thing. Right. And, 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 and don't, and don't over-engineer it. Like, don't make it complicated, but think, what am I already doing and how can research plug in, into this? That's a great source of, of info. Great. So Michelle will be joining us at Content Marketing World next week virtually. And can you tell us a little bit about your session? Yeah, so what I'm gonna be talking about next week is about, like the title says, how to make your original research stand out. And I think a lot of marketers are doing research and they think that, cause it does work, but the more research I see, the more bad research I also see. <laughs> so these are tips on how to design a research study and how to launch a research study. So it's, it's as interesting as, as possible. So it talks about things like using interactive data and it talks about things like, you know, how to really get the most story and the most usefulness out of the research that you put together. Sounds like a great session to me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ha want to go over, you can head over to contentmarketingworld.com and register. Use this little code and you can save a um, hundred again. If you're there, please also connect with me and Michelle. You can connect with Michelle, too, on the platform as well, because she's a speaker. Michelle, where can people find you if they, for some reason, do not want to come to Content Marketing World next week? Absolutely. You can shoot me an email. Um, it's Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, at mantisresearch.com, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I mean, Amanda knows I love doing this stuff. I I'm the reason I always love working for CMI is because we could all share ideas and be helpful. So if anyone does have questions or wants to brainstorm or anything, please reach out anytime. Like this is what I, I, I love about this job and, you know, working with people like Amanda. So reach out anytime. 
Uh, we do have one quick question from Dana. She says, would you suggest putting paid content out with the results, findings, blogs, webinars? So I'm not sure if you can clarify. So are you asking if you should, can you ask the question again, Amanda? Are you? She's asking, would you suggest putting paid content out with the results, findings, blogs, webinars? So I'm assuming like... So I think that, yeah, I think you can definitely do a webinar to launch your research finding. I think that you can definitely do all sorts of, like if you're, if you do sponsor content, you can use your research findings as a um, source of any type of content that you put out in the world, be it, you know, organic or paid content. Great. Oh, here's one. What if the survey comes out inconclusive? You know what? You're going to get some questions. You're like, well, I didn't learn anything, or that was a touch. The <laughs> so one, like, put that in your in your memory bank, and two, no, it's just it's just going to going to happen. But make sure that from the beginning, one of the things I I do with, for every survey is I have what I call a story map, and I like document how I'm going to use every question. Hmm. And some questions, the answers are going to come back, and it's going to be inconclusive or not what you expect it. But if you have a reason for asking every question from the beginning chances are you're gonna find something interesting. Or the other option is to look at that question by different segments and see oh. if there's an interesting story, if you can be like, well, you know, overall it says this, but right. you know, that can make it really interesting. So don't write it off just because it looks like it's inconclusive. <laughs> exactly, and if you, and, and maybe that's a story in and of itself, yeah. like people just don't know, or there's, they're, they're, or they're split. Great, Michelle. Thank you so much for taking the time um, joining us today for this. And thank you, everyone out there. Again, I hope I see you next week at Content Marketing World. I will be there. Michelle will be there virtually. You can check out her session as well. Until next time, everyone, be well. We'll see you. Bye, Michelle. Bye. Nice to see you. Bye.